Love podcasts, hate nonsense. It's the Politics Joe podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Dudes be rocking. Dudes be rocking. Dudes rock. The audience will be delighted to learn there's not a single woman on in the, the room. In the room. In the room at the Politics Joe desk currently. It's in our returning to our rightful state. Much would, like our audience. Would we say in Plato's world of the forms that Politics Joe has an all-male staff? Yes, you might have to talk me through what the world of the forms it's is. It's like something in its purest conception. Oh, so, right. Oh, the, so like, like the platonic ideal of. Yes. So there's there's the like a table, right? Right. And in the world in in the world of the, there's like the perfect thing that encapsulates what a table is. Yep. So in the in the in the perfect conception, the 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 form that best conveys the essence of politics, Joe. Are there any women? No. <laughs> <laughs> have, I, have, have I mentioned I met the platonic ideal of our audience? Have I told this story? Before you do, yes, I think the platonic ideal of our audience is the guy that you and I met after the live show, who'd got the bus down from air from air, yeah, for the limey fucks who don't understand Scotland. Yeah, can you explain where that is? It's near Glasgow. It's not far from Glasgow. How long would a bus from air to London take? Probably eight hours, nine hours. And he came down. He came down. Came to the podcast. He was going straight back to Victoria. <laughs> he couldn't come to the pub <clears> after <throat> because he would miss his bus back. Yep. That guy had a similar energy, actually, to the people that I met. Go on. I was in a pub and these two guys, we guys, came up to me and said, oh, we love the podcast. And I looked at them. And they were so lovely, very, very earnest 18-year-olds, mm. like, loved politics, Joe. And one of them was wearing a pro-EU badge. <laughs> I was like, that's the audience. <laughs> that's the audience, is A-level politics students who te whose teachers have told them to watch this. <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the platonic ideal I, of the audience. I, of course, it's not, it's not <laughs> our, our right, it's not, so, excuse me, it's not our ideal. Our audience is, we would like to think our audience go to boiler room and do cat. <laughs> <laughs> I think our audience has done none of you those think things. The, do you think the audience is FBPE? <laughs> yeah, oh my God, yeah. Mm. What, what? Do you think at some point your contempt of the audience will ever come back to but, bite you? No, they like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they quite admire it. Do they? I think so. What about all the people that aren't FBPE and, and recognise FBPE to be tragic and you're saying... You lot are FBPE. I'm not saying they're all FBPE. But, you, but when you say that that's the platonic ideal, that is what you're saying. You're saying they should be like that or you believe them to be like that. No, if they're condensed. If you were to do like... Uh, A nice shoe. If you were to the, boil the, them down the, after the, several it would hours. It would be the head of EU Supergirl. Oh my God. <laughs> no! <laughs> the right arm of an A-level politics student What's the fucking guy in Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> What's the guy that when you put the five cards together? <laughs> What's he called? I don't know what it's called. Exodia. 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 Yeah, fucking it, Sam. Bang on, yeah. That was, yeah. The, I, sorry, go on. Madeline, yeah, Madalena Kay, EU Supergirl, right. A-level politics student. Yeah, left arm. Um, surprisingly old person you meet sometimes. Yeah. Uh, left arm, some... Or left leg. Ooh, I'm running out of people. Mm -mm. Random Americans. Right. Some of these Americans say they listen, and it all surprises me. What are you getting out of it? I met one in the Vatican. The Pope listens to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I met the man in the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> I met the one in the Vatican. You've been on holiday. Yes. Not just the Vatican. In Italy. Yes. What did you learn? What did I learn? Mm. Um, what did I learn? That's such a good question. At one point, me and my two friends did a walking tour of Florence, and I realised it had been so hot, I hadn't really been listening. Because <laughs> my, my friend Ethan kept repeating facts. Mm. He was like, Isn't it, oh, it's crazy that this. And I was like, how do you know that? And he said, the tour of walking tour. <laughs> um, the Medici's were a powerful family in Florence. Italy's sick. Yeah. 
A big that, that's a very important lesson. What, the Italy sick? I'm so deep on Italy now. Yeah. I only have been post-COVID. I'd never been before. And I'm so, I'm so fucking into it. What was your aversion pre? Well, I'd never been, so I couldn't tell you whether I liked it or not. It's just like the idea of like, you only want to go to somewhere that <laughs> suffered a pandemic. Right, sorry, yeah. <laughs> no, as one, no, of the, tragedy as one of the early European adopters of COVID-19, <laughs> I wanted to go and pay my respects. You saw, you saw them singing on balconies. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, this is cool. Was it ski resorts? Was that was it was it northern Italian ski resorts that sort of oh, early so. early adopters? And that's how like Britain found out about it was like posh people coming back. Yeah. Warning. <laughs> the dude, Ringing the four there. horsemen of the apocalypse. And I must say, what a what a Tarquin. Ch- what a choice week I t- took I took off. Yes. Yeah, good for you. Mm-hmm. Good for you. I mean, you know Sam uh mocked me in my in my name strap on the podcast last week, it was like Ollie Dugmore lets everyone go on holiday at the same time. <laughs> 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 and, you know, I thought uh-huh. after an election period in which everyone worked up a lot of time in Lou, yep. from like a, you know, a business management perspective, it's in, it's in my interest to get all of that time in Lou, in Lou, yep. you know, deploy that sucker. Go to the loo. And typically, August is a slow news month. Mm-hmm. Typically, I, I, it's not like politics just stops happening, but basically in Britain, the people that, you know, you're from, from your top members of the political class, the media class, basically if you don't have prominent people talking about things and if you don't have the usual... Um, sort of your top tier journalists making big stories happen it's it's quiet it's silly season mm-hmm. right that's 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 how i end up with one of the best things guido Fawkes ever did for silly season mm-hmm. was they spent a month like harrying the isles of silly council they were like it's silly season so we're just going to fucking sake. come for the isle of silly <laughs> <laughs> and, and they, they did them i feel like geronimo geronimo the alpaca was silly season yes as well. yes that and as leader of the opposition, Starmer spent August saying Geronimo must die. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than now as prime minister, mm-hmm. you know, coordinating our, our governmental response to um, race riots. A similarly heavy handed approach. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think we can glean a lot of we, lessons. We saw the authoritarian tendency early. Geronimo. Did we go and do the Geronimo protest yeah. together? Yeah, yeah, that was in August. Yeah, it was. It was interesting. There was, there was. Yeah, and and that's where and that's how you knew it was silly season because there were a, a series oh, of yeah. reporters just at, there, there yeah. at a protest in Whitehall. There were about three people there. I think there was an alpaca there. Yes, uh, well, I think we were told there was going to be an alpaca there, but there wasn't in the end. I feel yeah that might be, that yeah. might be right um it was it was, it was like a, a and we'll, you look gallery. around and you go you lot should be somewhere else yes you know <laughs> if, 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 you if, 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 death if you can see like harry cole liz bates <laughs> others you like great was there yeah this is not the most important thing in, happening in britain at the moment no uh not at all so oh, no, anyway no, no, excuse me. I, Maybe maybe that was the most important thing happening in Britain, but it was silly season. Yes. So there was a dearth of serious political issues to sink their teeth into. Yes. Um, and that's how we ended up with it just being me, Laura and Sam with the UK descending into civil civil disorder. Yes. Handled with aplomb. We did our best. We needed you. But... You've been on a fact-finding mission to the Vatican, so... Yes, I've done some awful research. <laughs> Dude, just one thing about the Vatican, far too many gift shops there. Right. I'd, say, I'd say a cynical level, a mercenary level of gift shops in the Vatican. I mean, presumably they want to extract as much cash from tourists as possible. Well, yes, but it's not, I wouldn't say they're short well, there, Should there be more chapels? I, should, I wouldn't say... That, I'm, what I, what that should there be more of in the Vatican? Chapels or gift shops? Chapel. Well, no, just instead of the gift shops, what should have been there? What should have been there? Information about the Vatican. <laughs> that you wouldn't listen to on the walking <laughs> No, it was cool inside. <laughs> it wasn't as warm as it was in Florence. Um, I thought it was... Make Marisons. the Sistine Chapel bigger. Yes, extend, make, them, make God and Adam further away. Yes. 
or closer yeah or revise it entirely so they're touching they what kind of touching <laughs> is that a sin <laughs> what to love another man <laughs> can you <say> <laughs> <laughs> Not God, in my book. God showed to Adam. To love thy neighbour. God showed Adam how much he loved his children by sucking them off. In a way, it's the purest Christian expression, is it not? To suck off a friend. Love thy neighbour as thyself. Everyone likes a blowy. How long have we been going for? This is this is good. I missed you. I missed you, buddy. In, in a gallery in Florence. I was with my friend, like two of my friends are a couple. I'm like, is that important? Probably not. But anyway. Just, I love it. You've got just, great intel on who you were there with. You did the show. <laughs> your su- your, su- oh, this is your sum couple. analysis, your sum analysis of the Sistine Chapel is that God and Adam should be sucking each other off. I've heard that there are too many gift shops in the Vatican, that it's hot in Florence, but I know the name of one of the people you went for and that some of the others were a couple. No, no, no. You've got your information. No, no, you no, buried no. the lead, No, no, no. You, you've misunderstood. Oh, sorry. I was only there with a couple. Ethan and his partner. Yes, and they're the twig couple. Were you third wheeling? No, staying with them. They, they're, they're, they live there. They're living there for a bit. Sorry for poor OPSEC for me. <laughs> <laughs> He's only just getting back in. This He's is, lapsed. This is also... The twig couple, at whose engagement party I was lifting people up, asking if they were twigs. Well, you clearly didn't commit that much of a social faux pas because they no, they enjoyed it. Except you on holiday. Anyway, there is art, piece of art, and I'm not a big art head. TBQH. I've I figured that out with your feedback on the Sistine <laughs> Chapel. To be honest with you, <laughs> no big art guy. One thing that does impress me: huge b- pieces of art. If if art is enormous, you like it. That's cool. That's good. Like a Rothko, like a big Rothko. I'm quite into. Well, okay. But one of these paintings was of someone lying in like the shallows of a beach just getting off the mermaid. Getting off of the mermaid? Yeah. And it was bad. And it was... It, what genitalia does a mermaid have? What genitalia does a fish have? It's, like, it's called, I think it's called like a quacker. Is that birds? Or do they have the same thing? I don't have my phone, so I can't Google it. They have like a... If it's the same as a shark, presumably it won't be. It's kind similar. of like a flat, like flaps. <laughs> but that's male and female. I think a, I think, I think a, an up for it sailor could work with that. But no, my question is: Does the mermaid have human genitalia? I don't think so. Or it, the it genitalia doesn't have of a human, fish? It doesn't have human. I think it's from like it doesn't have. Is it, do mermaids have belly buttons? Where do the scales begin? Yeah, that's it's. That's why they're so beguiling. You just want to find out. <laughs> <laughs> rip that top off that's, that's the most um, Christian instinct is what's going on there Let I think it's, it. presu- it's presumably bikini line I think it starts at the yeah. waist so I would say yes belly button yes belly button but fish fanny <laughs> what was my point with that I don't know mate <laughs> you didn't like it one thing else in that in it that was gallery. too homoerotic <laughs> Sistine, Ch- Sistine Chapel not homoerotic enough <laughs> Mermaid snog painting, too, too gay. There was also a great result for Ethan, who has recently become Fucking, a... is, he, is Ethan, pa- is this a paid, paid <laughs> advertisement brought to you by Ethan? <laughs> Fucking... There's a, he's, recently, he's recently become a patron of a Napoleon history podcast. There's like... Right? It's, it's like... Oh. <laughs> no, that's yeah, not the end on. of the story. <laughs> And it's a super dense one. Yeah. There's like, a, he's listened to 180 episodes and they're only in like fucking 1805 or something. It's a super dense thing. Yeah. We walk into, the, walk into this room in this gallery and it's just Napoleon. <laughs> it's just bust of Napoleon. Napoleon arriving in Florence. And Ethan was absolutely thrilled. Is that the end of the story? Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And one of those paintings was enormous, so I liked it. The... In the recent Ridley Scott film about Napoleon, yes, there was a scene that pays homage to your succulent Chinese meal man. Oh yeah, that was weird. Who we lost? Yes, we did actually. Who we lost? Pull one out. Yeah. That, and also key Australian cultural moment. Did you see any of Ray Gun? I've only seen memes about Ray Gun. I've not actually seen any of Ray Gun's dancing. Yeah. Because I was, I was lamenting the Italian coverage of the Olympics to you earlier. 
Only, only volleyball, apparently. It wasn't the volleyball they objected to, it was the packaging. Beach volleyball or, or court, full court? Mm. You can tell because there'll be sand or not. <laughs> I don't even know if there was... I, don't, I think Sean was watching the volleyball in Turkey. I don't think I was watching volleyball. You just watched nothing in Italy? No, I've said I watched the fucking Olympics. I can't remember what, what discipline it was. But that, was, was, that was quite aggressive. So yes, because it, yeah. it was unnecessary. <laughs> you, know, yeah, you, know when, you know when you like, <laughs> before, like, oh, the dog bit because the guy had been kicking <laughs> Yeah. The owner had been kicking it for. Well, I was just asking over you what you were watching. I feel the, like you should know. But then when it was fucking running or something. <laughs> In many ways. <laughs> the perfect descriptor of the whole thing. Oh. Just fucking running. I do like the Olympics. Yeah, it's good. It is good. It makes me feel happy. Yes. It is a bit. It is a bit, um, I don't know how to describe it. I think it's, a, I think it's an indicator of my like, normie, normization mm -hmm. that I now find the Olympics interesting and like, you know, a celebration of the human spirit. Have you never, what, is that a new thing? Yeah, because previously I'd be like, that's fucking losers. But the Olympics? Yeah. It's was like, it, mate, it's like, it's like, your, like, it's like they're, like, they're like brown noses. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, it's just like fucking, uh, I what? don't know how to describe it. If you, if, iron if, discipline is brown nosing. You should have iron discipline, iron commitment to the pint scene. They don't. Most boring. Have you ever spent time with, a, with, a, with um, a an athlete? Uh, boring. <laughs> Well, yeah. Boring. Yes. They're not training to be interesting. They're yeah, training, and that's my problem. <laughs> that's my fucking they're problem. They're training to make you in sheer like, awe of human uh, capability. At, at school, yeah. did, you, well, did you know anyone who did like track and field? Yeah. Right? Were they a good time? You know the but answer. They, but no, were, uh, come on. Yes, they were, they were my friends. Not all of them. A few of them. I was friends with a few people who did track and field. But yeah. like, they aren't like elite people now. And you stayed friends with them? I'm not sure that's they any, of <laughs> any of that. Because they sacked it off. I, 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 look, it, like, I enjoy now witnessing the pinnacle of human, of human capability. I think it's amazing. I, I, yes. I, 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 love, I love to watch it. It makes me feel, it makes me feel fuzzy inside. It makes me feel and warm. And that's a new thing. Yeah. Before it should be like, fucking change the channel. For the Olympics? Yeah, gotcha. Is this the only Olympics you've enjoyed? No. When was the first? I would say 2012, but that's only because I went. What was your best bit of the Olympics? This one just gone? Yeah, yeah. Having something to do for like two weeks? Yeah, sick. You know, when you're at when home... You, you've got a baby. Yeah. So. <laughs> you, know, you, were, you were looking for stuff. Yeah, you know, when you're just... As I increasingly do, I'm just sat at home and it's like, it's very... It, it removes the decision-making process. Of, of an evening, we watch. you just bang. Yeah. Oh, archery. Yes. Cool. Speed climbing. Interesting. Speed climbing is good. Cricket's in the next Olympics. Is it? Yeah. In LA. Cricket. Yeah. Really. Mm. Instead of breakdancing as a what is a one and done. Oh, because they've decided that was a fucking mess. We're not doing that. Again. No, it was, it was pre decided. I don't. I don't really know how it works. But my they, understanding. They got rid of it. My understanding was that every host nation can introduce a sport. And then after the games, there's kind of a, I think it's the, I think the Olympic Committee. Mm -hmm. And they sort of decide whether they're going to keep it or not. There was, I read, in, I think it was in the FT Weekend magazine. There's a piece about qualifying, like the, the B-boys and B-girls uh, qualifying for the Olympics. And in that, they said it was a one and done. And that was before the Olympics. So I think it was a predetermined one and done thing. That's a shame because I would like to see Ray Gunn come back. <clears throat> she came, did she get a zero? Bro, she was terrible. You didn't, you didn't watch it. It was like... So you... I, the, my first interaction with Breaking yeah. was seeing clips of her on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. And in the clips, she gave the appearance of a kind of like a mum like, who's had to be drafted into the primary school to run a PE class. <laughs> and is like, right, let's do some dancing. You know? And yep. you're like, okay. Um, but you think, oh, well, I've just seen a clip. So maybe that's out of context. So you, I went and watched her whole routine. And it, it was all like that. So then I thought, well, well this is breaking. It's terrible as a sport. Mm -hmm. This is... If that's the Olympic If, if this is the Olympic <laughs> standard, 
So I watched who she was competing against. Uh-huh. She was fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> I very quickly realised. Do you break against people? Is it like yeah, a dance? Yeah, yeah. It's, like, like, a it's, dance like, it's like a dance top. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, and she's getting zero. So this other, this other girl's getting like smashing it. Yeah, I guess. It's like um, sing star. And then I watched some of the others, and they were also incredible. And it was like, oh no. How did Ray Gun qualify? Well, I think that's the question everyone's asking now. Was she? Uh, Whether it's a stitch up. Poor Ray Gun. What was I saying? Like, this was going somewhere. I got waylaid. Fuck. We're just talking about breaking. Oh, cricket at the Olympics. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you know who won the silver medal the last time the Olympics featured cricket? Who? Mm. You can guess who won gold. Great Britain. Yeah. Actually, I don't know that. I just assume that. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> but I know who won silver. And it's someone you wouldn't expect. 1908. That's not Russia. particularly relevant. No, it was France. Oh. Because a group of British expats in France <laughs> <laughs> but like let's just fucking give this a go That's lads sick. and they won the silver medal That's the thing what the Olympics has lost in hundreds or so years is it just like it's, it's no longer people just having a laugh people just having a go like you could be like there's a story about some some woman came turns out she'd won like a Winter Olympics gold medal during her gap year in like 1952 and she just thought she'd entered, like, a skiing competition. I didn't realise it was the Winter Olympics. Yeah. <clears throat> they are all, all also really fit. Mm-hmm. Like, the sprinters. Man. Handsome fellas. Yeah, they are. I think, yeah, well, you're just ripped. But is, 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 like, excellence just not attractive? No. No? Off-putting. Excellence is off-putting? Yeah. Be... I won't say inadequate. <laughs> be approachable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be, atta- be too intimidating. Be attainable. Could you imagine going home? What's for dinner? Nothing. Why? Oh. Was in Paris. Gold medal. Be like, fuck me. I think you'd know about that. You'd feel you? inferior. I don't, I don't think you have that good. If your partner had won a gold Surprise medal at the Olympics. Shit. Imagine you've like such an, you know, you know, when you hear about people talk about their boyfriends and girlfriends, you're like, why are you with that person? I was like, they take no interest in in like your your job or your give me an example hobbies if someone's like you meet someone's boyfriend or girlfriend and they're like they don't ask any questions to the group like your mm. friend's new partner don't ask any questions yeah they kind of just don't seem that interested in yeah. anything and the only stories they tell the they tell you about that person is like negative stories mm. imagine of you as like an olympic gold medalist <laughs> had one of those partners <laughs> oh sorry sorry i couldn't uh, come to paris i was at um it was Dino's birthday. Do you know who the fittest Olympian is? It's the Croatian water polo guy. I don't. I, you not seen this? No. I was doing. I was doing a walking tour. Yes, famously. <laughs> yeah, absorbing, absorbing the the beauty the and the history of Florence. Yeah. Just stick it into Google um, for me, because the man is hot property. Croatia water polo. Yeah, he'll probably be the first picture. Sexy Croatia water polo. It's peak <coughs> male performance in the... You got him? No, hang on. Oh, fuck, Google's doing a... An <laughs> Google's doing an animation telling me who won. Um, it's the Americans, isn't it? They, all, they win a fucking everything. Is it, I'll tell you what, they this guy? No, he's topless in the photo. Oh, he's yeah. just wearing Speedos. Water polo... And obviously his water polo hat. Oh, this guy. Amen. Yeah. Amen, brother. What an absolute hunk. He's like the guy, who was it in the Euros that was an absolute unit? Oh. Can't remember who he played for. Yeah. Hungry. Did he play for Hungry? I think so, yeah. And he was just an absolute... Machine. Hulk. Yeah. Hulk of a man. Dad strength. Yeah. Do you feel stronger? <laughs> Has your bench gone up? <laughs> no. Emotionally. Yeah. Um, my headaches are stronger. I bet. A lot more stress and fatigue. Mm-hmm. The remorseless swing of the scythe. Um, so I guess I feel stronger in a way. I feel the pain in my head in a stronger fashion. That's interesting. Yeah. About just in, in general? Yeah. Okay. 
More severe headaches, I think. Are you drinking enough water? Probably not in this heat. No. But then I'm not prepared to take lessons on heat management from you. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my best. <laughs> You try and listen to a lecture about a 16th century door maker in... I like used to be quite into um, sort of, you know, Il Duque, the fucking... <laughs> the Borgias, the Medicis. <laughs> they meant Mussolini. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I used to be quite into, like, Italian... Italian history. Yeah. I've lost it all now. I, did, I, did a, I, wrote, I wrote an essay about the Borgias at, at school. Voluntarily, wasn't forced into it. <laughs> what, like as coursework or like for pleasure? I, I feel was oh this a Gerard Durden thing? This is like fifteen years ago. I feel like there was some kind of extracurricular or PSHE thing where you could like study something of your own choosing. Oh, EPQ may have been that extended project qualification, something like that. And I think I'm pretty sure I did the Borgias. That's cool. Um, I did a module on Italian politics at uni. It was a fucking nightmare. Regretted it enormously. <laughs> it's <was> chaos. It's <laughs> fucking raw chaos. Were the lectures like that as well? The lectures? Uh -huh. I, yeah, I mean, I didn't go, so... Yeah! <laughs> Again, this is the problem, right? Those athletes mm -hmm. probably went to lectures. Yeah, probably, yeah. Subpar. I don't know. I think if you'd gone to like an, a, a camp when you were 14, and you'd be like, right, you are the current most athletic 14 year olds in the country. We, we are going to work out what sport you're going to do. We've predetermined that if you work, do this for 10 years, you're going to win a gold at the Olympics. This aircon's really fucking yeah, coming to play today. I think I, if, you're, if you're told that 14, like you are like a genetic marvel. You'd be like, okay, well, yeah, fucking sick. When they came to you and said that, why did you turn them down? Because I wanted to do this <laughs> instead. <laughs> I thought you have the per you're the perfect phenotype for podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> they said a wee, a wee Scotsman with a mellifluous <laughs> accent. <laughs> Get this man a microphone immediately. Do you want to uh, achieve kind of immortality by setting a new record in the discus? Mm. No, I would much rather uh, make videos for Twitter. That was a good, a good Olympic moment. Pakistan, the uh, the javelin. Yes, I think the first non hockey gold medal or no, non hockey medal, first gold. I think. I'm just trying to remember the commentary. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong. In Pakistan's history, and he set a new Olympic record. I think with the throw. So like 80 meters flung it. What do you think would happen if it hit you? If it hit you? Yeah, if you were... Let's say you're oh, the, guy, you were the guy. Let's say you're the guy that runs out and it's like... Whoa! They're brave people. And you were slacking. You weren't paying attention. Yeah. Maybe it's a hot day. Yeah. You're, not, you're not paying attention to what's going mm -hmm. on around you. Before you know it, javelin coming in hot. Oh, it go right through your shoulder. I think you... Depends, well, I suppose it depends where it hits you. I feel like there's a guy that this happened to. Did it land his foot or something? And I feel like it happened to him twice. <laughs> Genuinely. I can't remember whether it was the guy who got hit or whether it was the, the thrower. Hit some, well, at that point, he's trying. If, if you're the athlete, you're trying to hit the person. I think it was the thrower. Uh -huh. And I think the first time the guy survived and I think the second time the guy died. Holy shit. I think. Well, or, or it was an adjudicator and he got hit twice and died on the second occasion. If it's the same guy, you become you investigate that man. You, no, you, yeah, of course you do. No, you don't. You don't. So, uh, you, yes, um, yes, Governor. I was throwing a javelin as fast and hard as I could across yep. the athletics track, as I am professionally qualified to do. Yeah. As as was stipulated in, in my contractual obligations yep. to participate in the tournament, I said I would throw this as fast and hard as mm -hmm. I could down the field. Mm -hmm. Okay, what if someone on the skeet team kept killing people? <laughs> and you, and you, you're, happy, you're happy to let you're happy it's to different. let that go. It's different. You're happy to let that go. Okay. Did you see what happened to the GB woman in the skeet? No. She lost gold uh, on on the. They said she didn't hit a clay. Oh. She went. It went to a shootout. 
<laughs> yeah. Draw. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't remember who the person was. Yeah. Five paces. <laughs> Ten paces, probably. Um, and so they both get two clays each. And the, the GB woman, they said she missed one. And the TV replay showed she hadn't missed one. Oh. She'd hit it. And so she tried to appeal, and they were like, no. Christ. You only hit one. And, of, she, and she got silver on the basis of VAR on the Olympics. Well, she, she, it, it, it appeared like she was putting her hand up, that there was some kind of mechanism by which you could appeal. Mm-hmm. Maybe she exhausted her appeals. Yeah, or maybe they're not there in the shootout. Yeah. Do you know what else is crazy? How far away they are in the archery. Yeah, fucking nuts. Do you remember when they cut to that shot from behind where you saw that the arrow was actually like... Going up and down. You thought it was just going straight. Do you think um, the javelin is going to be a new tactic unleashed by authoritarian Keir Starmer in case there's any more riots? <laughs> Deploys a phalanx <laughs> to Rotherham. <laughs> <laughs> no you don't think that's going to happen could you would you I'm sorry I'm making you do a lot of googling I haven't got my phone it's on charge could you look up about a guy getting hit by javelins because I think it's happened twice and I can't remember whether it was the bloke guy who got hit or the man who did the throwing by javelin um, this is good <sighs> tragedy strikes as javelin throw kills 74 year old referee and was that the second time the referee had been hit? Um, oh, the guy was only 15. Holy shit. Who threw it? Yeah. Oh, brother. I don't think it says anything about him. No, I don't, I don't think the guy... Maybe it happens more regularly than, than, I, than I'd realised. Uh-huh. Look, Is I don't it? want to be mean to the bloke who died, but I feel like you, you can't be letting a 15-year-old kill you with a javelin. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, how far can he throw it? <laughs> like so what's your argument he should have like stood closer kept his distance well you, that no actually that probably be more dangerous keep your distance right let tiny Timmy <laughs> have his throw yeah walk up to it measure it but I don't understand why what- are you in the kill zone <laughs> 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 because why he, are you in tiny Timmy's he'd firing he'd, arc he'd, 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 tiny Timmy <laughs> Is a vicious have killer. Got, have you got a picture of Timmy? No, I think his, his identity. Oh, it would protect his identity. He's a child. Yeah. It would be f- if it turns out the kid is just like fucking yoked. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. So he's got, Actually, he's, he's clearly like 40. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a trained assassin. He's like, you know, you know, the, you know the guy in Greece who's yeah. got like a, who fully is just a man in his 40s yeah. playing a 16-year-old. Yeah. It's, it's like that, but he's um, in a children's athletics competition. Yeah, and Grandad actually did think he was far enough away to be safe. <laughs> and it, he didn't even like pretend to be doing the javelin. He just fucking like, like <laughs> threw it like a dart. <laughs> you, if, could, you could actually throw it much further. But he just intentionally aimed it at the referee. If I gave you a javelin and said, Ping it. Kill someone with it. Kill someone. Could you? And would your mechanism for doing it be throwing it? Or would you like, I think a, if like I, a pikeman? I, th- I think if I, if I was to kill someone with a javelin, it would have to be the pike method. Because you couldn't throw it accurately enough. Yeah, no. Or they'd have to be, really, they'd have to be much closer than, 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 than it would be advisory to throw. I wonder if you want distance for the throw because you, it, it perhaps accrues momentum on the downward arc of the throw and could therefore inflict more damage. Whereas if you're at point blank, you've got to throw it hard enough. But then, yeah, it's, it's, it's different. You'd probably use a club or something if they were within, like, pike ridge. Yeah, just snap it in half on your leg. Or just like and the, then just fucking or just stop like, wailing on them. If it's going into like hand to hand combat, yeah, and you think that's a possibility, like you probably have a weapon at your disposal that's not a javelin. Yeah. So like, but okay. for the purposes of the experiment, right? That's all you have to hand. Just a javelin. Yeah. Okay, I would. Probably... Could you kill an unarmed person if you had a javelin? I probably. Well, yeah, probably. What about if the other person also had a javelin? <laughs> <laughs> um, what would be your strategy? Hold it as far along as possible, so you're not get, letting them get within like javelin's length. They've probably gone for like a there, right? So they've got oh, they've got to get this close. Yeah, but if, if I'm back here, you want range? Yeah, yeah. And then they're running into the end of it before they can even get to me. 
Oh, like an Agincourt. Yeah, like a lot. <laughs> okay. The- <laughs> nice. Do you, th- do you think like a line of mounted knights <laughs> would would do you think that would um, dissuade the far right from marching, or do you think the ten year prison sentences will be enough? I like how the second time you've tried to pivot it back, <laughs> <laughs> and I will be declining. <laughs> oh, offer received. <laughs> <laughs> offer declined. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean they've they've turned tail and run in light of some pretty pretty weak prison sentences. So, do you think they should have? I think a, a mounted cavalry charge would probably, <laughs> would probably make them shit themselves. If they were sending mounted cavalry on the far right, yeah. then they could complain about two tier police. <laughs> <laughs> they could, yeah. At present, if. Um, if you're getting five years for sitting on a Zoom call and talking about people climbing the gantries on the M25, but yeah. not actually doing it yourself, you get five years for that. Um, and then you're part of a riot which sets fire to a police car, throws bricks at a mosque, and you get, I mean, they vary 32 months. Yeah, I think, I think, I think you could say there's, there's, there's two tier policing. I think you could say you've had it pretty pretty lightly. I understand that the reason, though, is they've tried to go for lesser charges to bring about some sort of speedy speedy convictions. Because it's, it, it's a much more difficult thing to prove a riot charge, because a riot charge you have to prove sort of like cooperation amongst the group, whereas if someone, I don't know, racially aggravated assault or whatever, it's more individual, it's easier to, easier to convict. So you wouldn't get the maximum... That's why you're not seeing bigger sentences because I think rioting is ten years maximum. Um, yeah. Do you think that's the end of it? Do you think that's the end of it? Yeah, of this speed. Football's back on now, isn't it? Mm. How did you get on? How do, at the weekend? Yeah. Beat Motherwell two one. Penalty. No, open play. I don't see goal. that. Maybe it was an own goal. No. We laboured to a draw with Reading. Ooh, the Birmingham City that... Massacred Rangers. <laughs> Massacred. <laughs> yeah. In your beautiful stadium. Um, How so, was that? That was fun. Yeah? Yeah. I had to go into Birmingham City. Something that... I was, I was listening to... Um, what's it called when a podcast is a friend of the podcast? What, another podcast? Yeah. Or can they be our friends? Vassal State. <laughs> our ally. Yeah. Oh, on, I'm also claiming quite a big podcast as our, as our <laughs> friend. Go on. In the rest of his the rest is history about Are they our friend, friends of friends of ours? <laughs> yeah, I like them. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't realise the criteria was that you like to listen to it. <laughs> well, I thought you meant that it was you I thought you a story about someone we knew that oh, like, no. had a podcast. No, 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 no. Okay, sorry. They're they're friends. Yeah. They're, they're, I think podcast I listen to is probably a good descriptor for that. Yeah, or friends of what's like another friend of the podcast friend of the podcast that you like. What's another podcast that I like? As in, so they so you can get one as well. So the currently podcast friends oh, are the rest sorry. of the history. Uh, my good friend Ezra Klein. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic podcast. But in their series about the French Revolution, they're basically talking about they're making the importance of riots being fun and it being like an attractive thing to do. Right. And I think that's an interesting thing here is that an attractive thing for people going to these things is if you're into that kind of violence, you think, oh, that's class. And that's an encouraging reason to go. And it makes the, you make it look fun. Like, that's what people were saying, why have you taken four cans of cider on this demo? Mm. So, well, because I'm having a drink and a laugh with the fucking lads. Like, that's an attractive reason to go. Yeah. Wouldn't catch an athlete doing that, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Which Olympic athletes do you think would have been at the far right riots if the Olympics hadn't been How on? How do I answer this question without libeling someone? <laughs> you can which, which team do you think harbors far right sympathies? 
<laughs> what sport? It's probably one of the shooting team, isn't it? <laughs> the equestrians. <laughs> yeah, dressage feels good. Just posh. That them. woman that was beating up her horse. <laughs> well, you've named <laughs> They all do it. It's ambiguous. It could be one of any, it's more no, than 12 people. You said that woman. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know which woman I was talking about. I know exactly. No, you don't. It's, <laughs> it's one of the most fucked up things. By pe- a- Anyone who rides a horse hits it. Yeah, it's weird. Deeply strange behaviour. Yeah. I think you should just give your horse a little... Good. Yeah. You know how they... You, you know, a little, a little if you're ever on a walk and a horse is in a field and it comes over to you, you yeah. know, you do that kind of... You sort of you, you you wouldn't do it to any other animal. You sort of stroke down the length of its nose, huh. and you go shh. Yeah. Maybe sometimes you give it like a, mm-hmm. or wave a carrot at it. <laughs> Which you just got on you. Professionals bring carrots on walks. Yes. Right. For luring horses in. <laughs> You're some sort of horse snatcher. Well, it's just nice, isn't it? Just it's nice to commune with another animal. Yeah. Why was I saying? <laughs> You were about to, you were in the middle yes, of live sorry, someone. Normal normal way to interact with a horse. Yeah. Who yeah. wants a carrot? <laughs> Nose stroke. Okay. Normal way. Psychopath way. <laughs> fuck fucking stop it! Fuck! Fuck! <laughs> you stupid fucking idiot! <laughs> Jump higher! You're too fucking slow! <laughs> There isn't like a sport with horses that's not inherently cruel, is there? It's polo cruel, probably. I would just expect so. I wouldn't trust posh people with things like that. No, they probably it can't hit, be nice. Probably hit them with the mallets. <laughs> they have. Do they have whips in polo, according to Sean? Yeah. I guess the the horse. <laughs> do you want me to hit you with the mallet or the whip today? <laughs> A special treat for you today, boy. <laughs> Just whip. I won't hit you with the long hammer today, Jeffrey. Uh-huh. You get to keep your teeth today, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pure animals. Is there a nice... Have you ever seen a draft horse? Like a working horse? Yeah. No. Brother. Brother. Are they huge? Oh, my God. I, I don't have my phone, so I can't, you just have to <laughs> okay. Google it yourself. <laughs> You're giving me a lot of work. There's, um, there's a classification. What's the right word? Not species. <clears throat> Breed. Breed. French. It's like grey. It must Whoa. be. Yeah. That's a serious animal. Quint it. Do, would you like can, to see? Can I see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's that. It's that. What breed is that? No, that's the Belgian draft horse. That's not who I'm looking for. Sorry, Ed. No, don't worry. Percheron. Percheron. Yeah. Let me just pull up. Pull up this. Let me just get an image for you here. I want a good one. Holy shit! What the fuck? You ain't whipping that, that no. fucker, are you? <coughs> that could kick you and cause him serious damage. In fairness, I think you could say that about most horses. Yeah, all. All horses, I think. Would you take on a Shetland pony? Actually, I could, you could probably... You could probably kick a jet and pony quite hard. When you say you... One. Do you mean me? No, one could. One could probably yeah. kick a jet and pony, which we would never encourage because we are horses, friends of the podcast, famously. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Ezra Klein, Dominic Sambrook and Tom Holland and horses. And the breed, the Percheron breed of draft horses. <laughs> um, what are some other things we like? Has anyone fought a Shetland pony? They must have they done. They must have done. That's a... Yeah. Because they're, it'd be, that'd be, that wouldn't be. I reckon you could kick a Shetland pony's head. That'd clean be sad off. to see. You, that wouldn't be a sport. Even if you were, into, be, it'd be entertainment. If you were into like dog baiting or whatever, like I think seeing a man fight fucking, a Shetland pony would be quite sad. What's the fucking peep show quote? It's like I may be a homophobe mark, but I'm not a badger baiter. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, can we talk about um, a, or, a, the genuine news story we need to talk about today? Yes. The chair of a fox hunting group says that UK hunters should be a protected minority like Roma people or LGBT people under the Equalities Act. Do you have thoughts on that? (laughs) So I think there's... What's the man's name? Ed Swales. Yeah. Friend of the podcast. Friend of the podcast. (laughs) Enemy of horses. (laughs) No, he's probably friend of horses. Enemy of foxes. Enemy Enemy of of foxes. foxes. Yeah, it's on site. (laughs) Streets... Streets luck off for them. Streets luck off for the foxes. Foxes don't want Ed Swale smoke. No way. Um, I f- feel he's failed to understand the difference between an ethnic minority and a minority interest. Yes. Because they aren't the same thing. <laughs> and it's not even close. <laughs> um, Being into having a hobby isn't a protected characteristic. <laughs> I'm not going to say. <laughs> I'd like you to. <laughs> no. Um, I'm just trying to think of hobbies that could be protected characteristics, but I don't. Um, or protected characteristics that could be hobbies. Being old is my hobby. I'm a pensioner. I don't think that is a hobby. Could be. It's not voluntary. I go and collect my pension once a week at the post That's office. Not a hobby, though, That's a it? hobby, isn't it? No. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> Playing bridge is a hobby. See? Pensioner. <laughs> Single hobby. Yeah. Yeah, these are all, like, if you're old, you can do these things. But being old is not a hobby. And I think you've been disingenuous. What other protected characteristics could be hobbies? I like the guy, <laughs> the guy said the group is going to try and mount a legal challenge to prove that those who support hunting have suffered discrimination, e.g. losing work, or been abused on social media. <laughs> but I think if you like, oh, I don't want to employ you because I found out. You hunt animals for hunt- sport. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're a good culture fit here. Yeah. At this, like, <laughs> at this publishing house. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid your participation in blood sport <laughs> renders you a bad cultural fit at the media agency. <laughs> or, oh, darling, I've received a tweet. You dickhead, you kill foxes. What the, well, what if I said that? What yeah. if I said that to a Hindu? I've I've spent a lot of time on this pod talking about my views my views around killing animals, um, and I I I think there's um, I think there's little things that are lower. Ri- the air, the aircon's <laughs> like ripping a bong. Then <laughs> uh, killing an animal for entertainment. You know, mm-hmm. um, bullfighting, fox hunting. It's not good. Dog fighting? No, that's fine. That is fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good night out. Better? Yeah. Cock fighting. Ooh, interesting. Ideally, you, um, 12 to 18 of your boys, you dig a, like a pit. Yeah. Ideally, it's sandy. Maybe, maybe I'd say the temperature has to be hot. I'd say it also has to be humid, <laughs> which means you're probably looking at um, the subcontinent, Southeast Asia. Yeah, but like dreadful news about the heat also is you won't be able to pay attention on your walking tour the next day. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you if you get your bets right, you will be making a fair amount of money. Yeah, true. On on the fighting cocks. Um, so yeah. Pit. The pit needs to have the seats should be dug into the walls of the pit. You, oh, you're doing like architecture. You're doing. You're building an actual like stadium. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that seems less casual. Well, do you? <laughs> than I thought. Do you know of, of any venues where we can just go? No, you have to make it yourself. <laughs> what are you talking well, about? But what you're we talking about? We don't have. We don't have cock fighting <laughs> rings anymore. You have to no, make no, them. No, 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 no. I know. But I thought you were going to make it like, just like a just dig a hole. But you're, but you're, you've got infrastructure. You've got. You know what? You and your boys need somewhere to sit. <laughs> so you're going to all this effort to build twelve to eighteen seats. Yeah. It's like light, light you know, work. You just bring seats. If you have, a, if you have, no, you need, you need to be above the cocks. You don't want to be on the set. If you don't want to be like, 
at risk. At, on the, we're just in a room. Yeah, yeah. There's Cox fighting, and we're sat next to it. That's a recipe for disaster, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> spare, spare room nightmare. Yeah. So, you pick yours, I'll pick mine. Right. We'll, we'll fit little razor blades to their feet. Mm -hmm. I would say... <laughs> I would say first bout is probably like just before midnight right to get the early crowd in <laughs> the early crowd of 12 to 18 people but the big fights that has to be like a 2 3 like it has yeah, to be yeah, yeah. you have to be drunk yeah it has to build up to it once it gets real violent this, you have to be drunk this sounds like you've been accused of running like a commercial cockfighting like, like say in a world where cockfighting is legal in like an amateur capacity <laughs> but but you cannot do it commercially yeah. and you're explaining how to build a cockfighting <laughs> stadium <laughs> but in, and like an itinerary but insisting it's just for you and 12, well, 12 look, 18 of your friends the, the startup costs are actually pretty low I mean beyond <laughs> Beyond the cost of a digger, which <laughs> <laughs> which will speed up the process, and sometimes you can get like a brand deal, yeah, as but well. JCB sponsorship opportunity, yeah. you save on like, labour like costs, better help, uh, yeah, and also Gillette <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the razors, <laughs> the best a car can get. Manscaped could do it, yeah, well. manscaped.com. Uh -huh. um, you get. You get <laughs> You can get HelloFresh sponsorship for the chickens. Yes, because you've got to do something. It's, and this is where it's important, because if you eat the animals after you kill them, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but no one likes to eat fox. <laughs> and that's why this lot are fucking wrong -ans. This is what your small holding is. Yeah, it's not actually it's not actually a small holding. It's a it's a small it's a small to medium size cockpit, <laughs> cockfighting stadium. But you like I feel like the met like the 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 spectators should be sweaty. It needs to be hot. It needs to be humid. Yes, you should be wearing a Hawaiian shirt. It should, it should be, be sticking. Oh really? To you. It should be sticking. I was thinking to more you. a tunic. It depends because really what the aesthetic I'm describing to you mm -hmm. is like. Um, sort of post-colonial white man yep. indulging in foreign culture that he doesn't understand. Right. So, you, you, I don't know, you're in the depths of the Thai jungle. Mm -hmm. And after... What year are we in? 2030. Okay. I was thinking like 1980. I was thinking like a Tom Wolfe white suit. Oh. That's what, that's what I'm linen. imagining. Yeah. Yes. Um, in Bangkok. You mm -hmm. been to Bangkok? Yes. Did you go to Jim Thompson's house? No, I don't know Jim Thompson. Is. Yeah, neither neither did I, and I couldn't figure <laughs> he out. He like a guy. Yeah, no, he is. <laughs> so, what? So, you read like is a, he a friend you made? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's like he died. Like he died like forty years ago. Right. And his house is kept in like perfect condition. Um, it, it, it his death is a mystery. Apparently, they believe he like walked off into the jungle and got eaten by a tiger, possibly. Okay. His house is quite interesting and looks nice, which might be the reason why they preserved it. But who is he? This is the point. So you go there and you think, oh, this Jim Thompson guy must be interesting. <laughs> By the end of walking around his house, and it wasn't that hot, so I was paying attention. <laughs> Thank God for that. It just seemed like he was a random like advertising executive in the 50s. Oh. Who lived in Bangkok. And they preserved his house. I think there was a question mark over whether or not he was a spy. That is my old interesting. Yeah, no, absolutely. But w when I say, like, it was... Descri like looking at, it was like described as one of the premier tourist attractions of Bangkok. <laughs> You're thinking like, oh, was this guy like, I don't know, a, 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 a colonial administrator, someone that ran the country, a person of note in history. I and he, he, there's like some cool art in the house, which I think is why it's preserved, big? because it looks nice. Uh, big sculpture, some big sculpture. Okay. I would enjoy that. Um, but you finish looking around it and you're like, who the fuck is Jim Thompson? Like, I suppose there's a bit of like social history that's quite interesting. Also quite funny in a Thai accent. Jim Thompson. When they say Jim Thompson, yeah. Be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> See, and in many ways this is revealing about um, my yuppie liberal tendencies. Yeah. Very happy to map out a cockfighting enterprise <laughs> to you on the podcast. <laughs> Hesitant to do a Thai accent yeah. on the podcast. Yes. 
And that's not because I don't think it's funny. It's because... <laughs> I would, I would maybe <laughs> think it's about because, that. It's because I think this lot will have a problem with it because they're fucking woke. Because of the walk, the walk mind virus. Because of the woke mind virus. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Ed Swales, <laughs> protected minority. I'd quite like to meet Ed Swales. I will, I will join Ed Swales if simultaneously I can be registered as a minority group as someone who wants to do impersonations of other minority <laughs> groups and receive the same protections. He's if I, if I imitate them... You sound like Jim Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, is this racist now? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes, buddy. There's a good piece to be done. I think The Fence did some good pieces on... I think I feel like... Have I read a Clive Martin piece on, like... Comedy at the end of the pier. Yes, that was good. Actually, that was good. That was good. Yeah, that guy who was like, it wasn't Jim Davidson. It was someone else. Roy Toby Britton. Oh, I feel like um, it was more like a local guy, and he had a camera, and he was like putting it on people. Anyway, I'm not really doing it justice. No, so Ed Swales, friend of the podcast. Yeah, Jim Thompson, friend of the podcast. If I told you that, I'd have to kill you. Okay, once we find out who Could he is. Could be a spy. If you know who Jim Thompson is, please let yeah, us know. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. If you've been to Jim Thompson's house. I've never even heard of it. <laughs> Having been there, I can understand why you've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> not, do, you, not, do you think it was like an Uber Butler like shed thing? As in, we got, an early, we, an got early this, we got this guy's house to number one in TripAdvisor. Would you come to a cockfighting pit if I opened one? I think it'd be interesting. I would like to go for like work. I wouldn't want to go for like leisure. Coward. I don't think it is a coward. Yeah, you were saying you, you you're I think you're, I, I you're th admitting you're admitting to the morbid curiosity of wishing to see two animals fight to the death. Yeah. But wishing for the for the degree of separation afforded by visiting in a professional capacity rather than admitting that you're there out of your own interest. But I think it's different because I wouldn't have. I presume. I assume you're charging. No, I'd probably. I just. I'd be operating like a bookies, so I just make money on the bets. Hmm. That may be different. Then I'd, we'd have if, to. We'd have to. We'd have to probably raise prizes for the for the. If it was to, if it the was, owners of the so cocks. Like, so your first prize is like three three months of hello fresh. <laughs> If that's first prize, then yeah, I'm fucking there. <laughs> Love that stuff. Oh, you'd enter a cock. <laughs> um, no, I, see, my you don't my, get a prize for coming. My 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 quibble is the ethical. Do you condone it by just being there? Like, if it was like if what if it was dog fighting, would you just go? Would you go to a dog fighting ring? I'm not asking you to whether you morally condone it. I'm asking whether you want to go and get tanked up and watch some fucking animals fight to the death. <laughs> and, and you, for, like, some, yes, and you for some we're, reason... We're operating on different levels here, brother. You, for some reason, have a real issue with my moral quandary about this. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I don't, Is it I because don't you, you're scared that in the pit you'd be too close to them? No. I could, I could dig a second row of seats. <laughs> but that's a premium in. charge. There's like, there's like a royal box. Yeah. Um, the Campbell box, Campbell clan box. Campbell clan box, and it's me, Adam Naomi, my cousin. Yeah. Friend of the podcast, Naomi Campbell. <laughs> um, I don't think I would come if you... I think, you, actually, do you know what? If, if you had legitimately <laughs> built a cog fighting pit <laughs> and stadium, I think our relationship would have like deviated so far before <laughs> that you get to that path. Like, if you're taking the time to build this enterprise in, like, in Thailand... Well, um, you're probably not working here anymore because that's a lot of time. Our relationship probably would have be quite would be quite different. I guess it depends if I can get JCB to sponsor it. Yeah, because if so, then regular flights backwards and forwards won't be a problem. Yeah, but you'd have a, a we just have to get it running. It takes care of itself <laughs> by that point. We need one guy, <laughs> local guy, to run the books. <laughs> you need like. We need the question would be whether we raised our own fighting cocks or not. Would we just let people come with their own? Probably more money in having a stable. Sorry, a coop. 
เอาคืนอ a slate of cocks. yeah slate slate of fighting cocks yeah the <laughs> Cooper fighters what, what would you give them names yeah 100 like hunter I think you probably want to go more like revolutionary with it to like, be honest like with Robespierre. you Robespierre yeah Robespierre Che mm -hmm. yeah Garvey Marcus Garvey. Is it a compliment to name a fighting cock after someone? I don't know, like Jerry Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Friend of the podcast. What about what about sectarian cockfighting? Forget everything I that just said. Belfast, that, right? Here a, we go. That is a money maker. Loyalist cocks, Republican <laughs> cocks. We bring the communities together. We say instead of rioting and being united in your racism, we instead seek to unite you. In your love and thirst for for cockfighting. Yep, I think that's Cock like Park. I think <laughs> I think you've you've like exoticized the Irish to be like you know how you're all bloodthirsty, <laughs> violent, loving <laughs> psychopaths. Well, let's channel your natural no 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 thirst that's not what I'm saying for anger at all. and violence into these animals instead of each Cock other. Cockfighting is an every man sport. In fact, it's an every man and every woman sport. <laughs> and every non-binary non person sport yeah, as well. Everyone in between. The, the MBs are welcome. Children <laughs> are welcome for the early bouts. <laughs> I've, I've got amazing, like... It's only when the razor blades come out that we, then the kids have to leave. Good headline. <laughs> Empowering. <laughs> Meet the world's first non-binary cockfighting ring. <laughs> Glass the shattered. <laughs> that is like prime vice. Yeah, yeah. It's prime like 2018 vice. Maybe a bit, bit, bit more recent. Yeah. If that exists, I'd like to meet them. How would a chicken handle, let's say, cocaine? Not well. Do you think it would make it more aggressive? Yeah. If we if we did have our own coop, <laughs> <laughs> how would we turn them into the meanest cocks in the ring? Treat them badly, presumably. Yeah, that's why I was going with the cocaine. I don't think that's like a great example of animal welfare. <laughs> um, treat well, cocaine and kick Keep them. them hungry. Beat them. You want them to be mean. No, but you, want, you also want them to be energetic as well. Yeah, they do need to be in fighting shape. Yeah, like the athletes. But aggressive. Would you rather hang out with a cock fighter, like a fighting cock, or Noah Lyles? Does the fighting cock like me? <laughs> We don't know. You have, to, you, have to, you have to take a gamble. Noah Lyles might not like you either. I think, <laughs> given the context of the conversation we're having, there's a chance that Noah Lyles won't like me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, fighting cop. Yeah. What is it like? We're in a room, sat together. You're about to. You're about to. And whether or not settle, he attacks me, you're is, about to settle down and watch an Adam Curtis documentary together. Yeah. <laughs> And it's the same activity with the cock and Niles. Yeah. Niles? Noah Niles. No, you're also now doing it with the brother from Frasier as well. Mm. He's a third option. <laughs> I think fighting cock, because it goes one of two ways. I either get to sit down and watch the Adam Curtis do documentary uninterrupted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or there's going to be some japes. <laughs> <laughs> or you have to throttle the neck. Of this bird, yeah, that has like Gillette five blade razors attached to its feet. Yeah, <clears throat> the problem is you. I mean, you you need to grab its legs. Yeah, to kill it. I. You know when you, you go, want to get control of its legs. Cockroaches are pretty horrible animals. Yeah, you know when they've got like nasty fuckers trousers. Yeah, oh, I, I love that. those ones. Oh, I hate those. They ones. look great. They look like. No. Yeah. They look too they human. They look fancy. No, they're like, they look like Falkhorn Leghorn. I know that's the point. I know that's the point of Falkhorn Leghorn. <laughs> but it's, they're too anthropomorphic. No, they look fancy with it. Uh, look at him there strutting his stuff. Yeah. And, psych, there's a razor blade hidden in it. Um, I think that's us. I think that's, I think that's the podcast. I, I hope, that's the podcast. I hope they enjoyed that. 
Do you know what this thought? This was content for the audience. No, it's not. They like this. <clears throat> so, yeah, no, they do. Uh, also, the last episode, I kind of it was literally like an hour and a half of me and Laura. We didn't make a single joke. No, it was ju- it was just deep, deep and sincere engagement. Yeah, with the issues. With the issues, and I think I think the last one I did was quite serious as well. It was, and I think after having given people that for several weeks, yeah. I think everyone wants a little bit of... A like, handbrake turn. Yeah, I want to kick back, relax, put 20 quid on fighting Che. <laughs> it's, Have 10 sing towels and half a gram of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling that the Jim Thompson. <laughs> yeah. I want to kick back and have a real Jim Thompson of a night. There's a, there's a huge sculpture. We don't know why. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is this it? Yeah, I, I think that's it. Okay, cool. I think that's certainly... Believe it or I, not, that's everything on this list covered. Yes, <laughs> it done. is. Yeah, that's that's the Politics Joe podcast. Yeah, thank you for listening, everybody. Do you think they're still here? Yeah, yeah. Um, remember to... Uh, you have to pay your dues for the rejoin the EU party tonight. <laughs> Um, we could start a crowdfunder yeah. to get our first JCB. <laughs> <laughs> JCB would pay for the others. We, have to, we just need proof of concept. And if, and if you work for um, Harry's Razors, reach out to us. For yeah, please do, yeah. <laughs> Manscaped as well. <laughs> Sponsorship opportunities. <laughs> Casper Mattress. There will definitely be countries where, where cockfighting is still, still legal. Yeah. Stamps.com, if you guys are involved. Burford Browns, they might want to. <laughs> Bernard Matthews. Nando's. Na- yeah, that was the obvious choice, isn't it? Morley's. I would like that. I like Morley's a lot. I think some kind of chicken sponsor would be good. If we ran it, let's say Thailand it is permissible. Wingstop. Yes. Yeah. So we ran it out of Thailand. Right. But we broadcast it in the UK. Yep. Through a series of, like, satellite channels. I just thought Twitter might be fine, but, yeah, we can do it like that (laughs) if you want. I have access to a cheap satellite. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Would that be illegal? Probably against Twitter's terms of service. Okay, uh, Rumble. Interesting. Um... What was, like, Pain Olympics hosted on? Oh, fucking hell. Those, those videos are bad, I actually they? never watched them. I think they were fake. Yeah. I, I read. Which you'd have to hope. With, with, with like, the guys, like, like, fucking hatcheting their own nutsacks and stuff. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't know you didn't watch it. I, know, I, I heard them describe it. I thought, well, no, I don't want to see that. So you've spoken like a man, like a true athletic star. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Should we wrap it up? Yeah. That's a, that was a long one. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Polish Show podcast, everybody. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. See you in the Reddit. Yes. R slash Politics Joe. If you've got nothing to say about this one, fair enough. What else could we... Uh, send Ed an email. Yeah. Ed like, at joe.co.uk. Yep. I like your emails. Um, uh, leave us a review for wherever you get your podcast. Yes, review. Five-star reviews, please. Yeah. Particularly after this episode. Because <laughs> I think we will agree this is the best episode of all time. No, you need light, you need light and shade. Yeah, yeah. You need balance. Definitely. And what I like is you don't know before you listen which one you're going to get. Have I told you about when someone... Were you, were you on the podcast when I said someone was said to me, oh, I listened to... Your podcast came up and I said Labour Manifesto analysis and I wanted to learn more about Labour's manifesto and then you didn't talk about Labour's manifesto. <laughs> and it had never occurred to me that someone might be searching by subject. Yeah, than, yeah, yeah. Rather than just, just us. 
No, we we no, we did do everyone's manifesto. Yes, but I think they were expecting a more robust analysis than perhaps we gave. What's what's funny for me is that for like most for people that consume a podcast regularly, the idea that I don't know, let's say in the Labour Manifesto we we sort of spent a minute or two mm-hmm. diverging. Yep. You know, in the same way that we have on this podcast, we've spent, you know, we've spoken a lot about the far right riots and in 30 <laughs> seconds, we've, we've gone off topic and spoken about yeah. some other things. As a treat for the listener. But then because you're used to listening to the newscast. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck? What, I, I don't care about Ethan. I don't care. <laughs> you take that back. Right? <laughs> I don't care about Florence. Yep. I don't care about, who the fuck is Jim Thompson? What is this? Is it yep. nonsense? But you and I are sat here going, I, I, I genuinely, I thought the manifesto episodes during the election were actually, like, gen, we did, we did say, let's talk about the issue. Oh, we did actually, yeah. It's not our fault, it's no news, pal. I mean, there is news, we've, yeah. just, we've just consciously had well, a nice conversation. Yes, true, I think, yeah. That's because they more conscious on your part <laughs> than mine. I offered you a diversion several times. <laughs> Shall we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, goodbye. Yeah, let us know if you stay to the end. Is anyone still here? I hope so. Let us know. I mean, we'll be on the live stream. Yeah. I will be watching the YouTube live stream. Yeah, <laughs> it drops to zero. Yeah, I know in my head what the last one got to. So let's let's base it on that. Okay. Excellent. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye.